Why, hello there, and welcome to another Your Tech Report video. Today is one that I'm really excited about because with Apple's recent release of the M1 Silicone, their own processor, their own system on a chip, we've seen the release of three computers. We've seen the Mac Mini with M1, the MacBook Pro with M1, and the MacBook Air with M1. Well, I've got my hands on the Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, everything else is pretty much factory, and we're gonna put it head to head with an $18,000 Mac Pro. Thanks for being here, guys. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell. This way you're notified instantly when there's a brand new video just like this to share with you. So Apple released their M1 processor, something that we've been waiting for all year long when they teased it earlier in March. Well, towards the end of the year, they announced the processor and everybody's been putting it to the test. We've seen Geekbench scores side by side with the Intel MacBook Airs, with the Intel MacBook Pros. And we've seen maybe a couple videos here and there of the Mac Mini versus Mac Mini. But what about the Mac Pro? Because I've got in front of me a Mac Pro that I configured about six months ago that has 192 gigs of RAM. It's got an Intel Xenon processor with 18 cores. I've got a dedicated GPU with the Afterburner card. And this machine retailed for $18,000. Now the Mac Mini that I'm putting up against this retailed for about $1,600. And it's the basic M1 processor and the Mac Mini body, which means it's got some cooling going on if the fan even turns on. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, figure might as well max it to future proof it. And I've got one terabyte of storage, solid state storage there, so I can store everything. So what I'm gonna do here is pop up two screens. And on these screens, I have two identical copies of Adobe Premiere Pro. The reason I'm using Premiere Pro is because it is not optimized for Apple Silicone. So it's gonna run with Rosetta translation in the background going on. Now, we're gonna put these side by side and I'm curious to redo this test in a couple months when Premiere Pro is updated for Mac Silicon, but we will do that down the road. So we've got a project here that's absolutely identical. It's my review of the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's got a bit of color grading going on. We've got a couple layers of content going on. We're gonna export this to an H.264 video we're gonna use the Vimeo 4K settings, so we're gonna render this in, in full 4K, 24 frames per second, and we're gonna hit go at exactly the same time. So here we go. We've got these two computers going on here. One is saying it's gonna take about 15, 20 minutes. The other one saying is about 30 minutes, but we really wanna watch this and see what's gonna happen down the stretch. Cue music, and let's do a little bit of a stop motion fast forward type thing on going on here, so we don't have to sit through 30 minutes of, uh, of video rendering in real time. Although that would be kind of kind of fun, but I don't think you'd want to watch that. So uh, let's, let's fast forward here uh, for a bit and see how things go, and we'll uh, check in with you uh, when we're about the halfway point on one of the computers. Okay, so it looks like we're about halfway on the Mac Pro. Clearly the Mac Pro seems to be about 50% ahead of the M1 Mac Mini. It looks like the Mac Pro is gonna finish in about 15 minutes versus the Mac Mini, which is gonna finish in about 30 minutes. I'm not overall surprised, guys, because of the specs on the Mac Pro, even though people have been, been seeing great performance uh, on the MacBook Air and the, and the MacBook Pro, and even, you know, Mac Mini versus Mac Mini, this is a little bit more of a beast. You know, this is people who have gone out and spent a lot of money on these editing machines because they're doing not only videos like this, content creation, I'm doing broadcast television, broadcast radio, so it makes sense for me in my workflow to get a machine like this because it paid for it pays for itself, obviously. But so so no surprise that it's um it's ahead, although I didn't expect it to be this far ahead. I did expect the Mac Mini with the M1 processor to be a little bit further ahead, but let's not forget as well that we're using a version of Adobe Premiere Pro here that is not optimized for this M1. So we hope to see some improvements when that is optimized for the M1. Will it beat it? Uh, I hope I hope not, because I've already got buyer's remorse from my 16-inch MacBook Pro that is getting annihilated by this M1. Anyhow, let's continue watching this in uh, fast motion, and we'll catch up with you towards the tail end of this video. Okay, so we're at about a minute left, just under a minute left on the Mac Pro. 
not the M1. The, Ac the M1 Mac Mini, as you can see here on your screen on the left side, still has about 15 minutes to go, just under 15, 14, 15 minutes to go. So clearly the Mac Pro is the winner. Uh, and it's going to uh, definitely surpass the performance of the M1 Mac Mini. Again, not Apple Silicon uh, optimized version of Premiere, but the same version of Premiere, the same project file, all the same settings, somewhat apples to apples when it comes to that. Definitely not apples to apples when it comes to the actual power of the computer itself. When I did some Geekbench scores originally on these two machines, the Mac Pro, definitely a multi-core, blew away the M1 Mac Mini, so I'm not terribly surprised about the results of this test. However, I am excited to redo this test when the version of Adobe Premiere Pro is optimized for the actual M1 processor. I think we're gonna do another video soon where we're gonna do the same thing here, but we're gonna do it with Final Cut Pro because Final Cut Pro is optimized for the M1 on, of course, the Mac Mini versus the uh, version of Final Cut that's on the Intel processor. So that's a little bit more of an equal comparison in terms of the software side of things, or at least the operating system that wraps around it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell. And don't forget to tune into your tech report on SiriusXM every weekend. Just go to SiriusXM.com and you can find our, our listings there or listen in podcast form on the podcast platform of your choosing. Have a great holiday season. We'll catch you on the next video.